I did an experimental drawing session and my drawings went from this to this in just a couple hours. But how is that possible? Well, let's take a look at the experiment and I'll play the recording in the background as we talk. Here were the rules of the experiment. Draw a bunch of characters, only focus on the body proportions and anatomy, and each one has to be different. Oh, and no breaks. Now, drawing for a couple hours isn't really the hard part. I've drawn for like eight hours straight and forgot to eat or pee, and actually that happened a lot growing up. No, the hard part is actually the fact that all these characters have to be different, and the only thing I can change is their body shape. It did not go as well as I had hoped. The first drawings were embarrassing and I am cringing as we speak. <laughs> Gross. Once upon a time, 16 year old me was going to a community college. I wish I could say I didn't wet my pants, but being in a class full of adults was very intimidating and I was even more shy back then than I am now. While I was in graphic design class, which was very boring by the way, you would think that something like graphic design would be kind of fun because it's another kind of art class, right? Yeah, me too, but it wasn't. Anyway, on the first day of class, before the teacher came in, I overheard another man saying that he had taken the other graphic design class and they had to come up with a hundred different designs for the same thing. I think it was a business card or something. Anyway, he was saying that it was apparently an excruciating assignment because after about 20 or 30 different design solutions, the ideas stop flowing. And when there are no ideas left in your brain, and you have like 70 more to go, and they have to all be different, it's like driving a car with no gas or running with only three and a half toes. I will always remember this moment because that sounded awful and I was terrified that I would get the same assignment because I didn't think I could survive it. And we were all waiting for the teacher to walk into class and then something unexpected happened. Almost as unexpected as a message from today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare has classes on stuff like drawing, illustration, painting, freelance, music production, all kinds of stuff. There's a class I always talk about by Vashti Harrison called Illustrating in Procreate, Creating a Shareable Time Lapse. It takes you through the whole process of creating an illustration step by step from start to finish. You don't need Procreate to do it and it's super beginner friendly. So if you like YouTube tutorials but you want something organized like classes, the first thousand people to use the link in my description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And you can cancel any time if you decide you just want to stick with the trial. Thank you Skillshare for sponsoring this video and thank you to all my lovely people on Patreon for sponsoring this video as well. Okay, back to me panicking before a class. The 100 unique design assignment sounded like a creative beatdown and kind of harsh. And the other person that the man was talking to thought this as well. He asked why they would give out an assignment that intense. And the man said that the teacher graded the assignment and showed that the first 10 ideas that the students came up with were things that the other students came up with as well. Not really any unique designs at all. They all basically did the same thing. Then there were a little less duplicates at the first 20 designs, then a little less at 30 designs, and they realized that the first 30 designs or so are often filled with cliches and things that are really obvious. And that in order to tap into actual pure creativity, you have to think beyond what your brain is comfortable with, beyond the ideas that come easy in the beginning. Out of the first 20 designs from the students, only a handful were usable because they all came up with the same thing. But then the professor showed the later design solutions of the class, the ones that they struggled with the most, designs 50 through 100, something like that. The ones that were created when the students were diagnosed with brain empty mode, nothing but static up there. And some of these later designs were actually ones that were pretty impressive and kind of amazed everyone. Truly unique concepts that the other students would have never thought of. And while it's true, that sometimes it's one of the first ideas that's most fitting, a lot of times it's not. Think about this for a second. Each animated movie that you see had hundreds or thousands of concept sketches for each character, exploring new ways to convey the character's personality and their role in the plot, and sometimes even changing the character as a result of the concept sketch that the team likes. Imagine if they stuck with the early version of Shrek, although he does look really cute. Rest in peace, Chris Farley. And so, adjusting body shape and proportion is just one of the many, 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 many ways that we can convey a character's traits. 
Are they big and top heavy like Mr. Incredible from The Incredibles? Or maybe super skinny and dainty like Pearl from Steven Universe? Maybe they have big hands like Wreck-It Ralph. The body shape and proportions are one of the things that go into both your character and the general art style of the world they live in, the project as a whole. I did more than 30 different body shapes, but not nearly 100. Even at about 10, I started to slow down. And by the end, my brain was politely asking me to smash my face on the table repeatedly. The first ones were rough. And honestly, it's hard to show because I'm embarrassed, which is actually normal for me. I knew it would take a little while because I struggle a lot and I can't just whip out something awesome on the spot like some of the artists I admire. So I just kept drawing until I had a drawing I was proud of. It didn't have to be something I was super proud of, but something I can look at and go, hey, Eh, that's actually pretty good, I guess. I drew that. And that's where these two babies came in. Oh, I love them. Spider-Man is my go-to for a reason. Well, besides that I just adore him in every version in every way. But it's also because he's a super easy character to make from a body base. I don't have to draw hair. I don't have to draw clothes. His eyes are super easy. I don't have to draw a face. I can just focus on the part that's important right now what I'm focusing on in this experiment, which is the body. I got bored and took a step back and looked at my sketches from earlier and my Spider-Mans a couple hours later, and they aren't the best spider people in the world. But there was no denying the difference. But wait, there was also something else about those beginning drawings too. With those ones, I was trying to follow someone else's figure drawing tutorial and it just tangled up my brain. But I kept in mind the wonderful tips that I learned from that tutorial, the one that I failed, and it helped me so much when I went back to drawing people the way that has been most comfortable for me. Like the ones from those tutorials I made recently about drawing bases for OCs and the drawing tips one and blah blah blah. But even those that I drew in my comfy style were so stiff in the beginning and I did not like them ni un poquitititito. In fact, I didn't even like any of those sketches. Not until I got to the Spider-Man ones, and even they, I didn't nearly really like them that much, but the point is, those failed ones were necessary to get me warmed up and into creative mode. I was not able to draw something like those Spider-Man people from the beginning. My stiff drawings from the beginning proved that. It would have been a stiff, lifeless Spider-Man if I just went for it first try. In order to get those loosey-goosey Spider-Man people drawings, I had to mess up like 30 times before I was drawing for real. And by the time I started the Spider-Man, it just came pretty naturally. It kind of, like I let my brain do what it wanted with my hands, and then I just zoned out thinking about random things like, how come mermaids never get wrinkly skin from being in the water so much? How can we fix the system that rewards young people going to college by letting them start their careers tens of thousands of dollars in student debt that will take decades to pay off if and only if they can find a decent paying job, which is hard to come by since half my country is making less than what minimum wage should be, and what if we just had one big nostril instead of two, like Qbert, or Birdo, or Patrick? Moral of the story is always eavesdrop on people and give up after the first try because you'll never get better no matter what you do. Now get off my channel, you freak.